Hi, I'm Pop Man. Today, I'm going to talk to you about inks that can be used to refill your Pigma pens. Come along. I think when thinking about the inks for use to refill like an empty ink pen or a brush pen, which means, you know, your Pigmas, Kuretakes, Faber-Castell, uh, Pitts, etc, etc. Um, the inks can be grouped by vis viscosity and how dark the ink is, uh, which is really just uh, how much pigmentation is in the ink. I think the Dr. Martens are most similar to the Pelicans, and the Speedball and the Black Cats are most similar. But all four can be in the same group because they share similar viscosity and blackness. The FW ink and the other acrylic based inks are in another group. At the Koi Noor is in a class of its own and in my opinion the best ink most universally suitable for refilling ink pens. Uh, that's because the Koi Noor was made for refilling rapidograph pens and has a viscosity level that can properly saturate the filament inside of an ink pen without clogging it or making the nib dry out too quickly. Which is pretty much what trying to put FW ink and other acrylic based inks would likely do to your ink pen or ink brush. The FW ink is so thick and the properties of the ink itself makes it dry very fast and with a super nice sheen which is perfect for inking with a brush and a metal nib pen or dip pen but um, it's not so good for the felt nibs of your ink pen or ink brush. The Doc Martens, Pelicans, Black Cats and the Speedball group is pretty good ink for refilling your empty ink pens. In general you can use the ink right out of the bottle to do the deed uh, but be sure to give your bottle a good shake you know uh, before trying to refill your pens. The ink pigment settles to the bottom of the bottle after sitting on your shelf for a while so you know, in my experimentations, uh, I've found that the inks from this group perform a bit better after watering it down a bit. I've used both water and a water mixed with uh, isopropyl alcohol solution to cut the ink a bit. Uh, I don't recommend cutting with just alcohol as I've never had great results with that. The ink will uh, flake or separate into chunks with alcohol, which, you know, nope, it's not good. Uh, but with a drop of alcohol and a half cup of water, it does pretty good. Or, you know, you can just not get fancy and just do water, and that'll be fine. So, uh, so why the alcohol, you might ask? Uh, I, found that, that, uh, I found that in experimentation that the tiny bit of alcohol keeps the felt, nib, uh, the felt pen nib from crusting over. Which is, you know, the true danger of using the aftermarket inks to refill your pens. I think the pens come back to life for a while, for a short while, but uh, they'll crust over uh, with any lack of use, you know, like daily use. Um, I recommend a 5 to 1 ratio of ink and water to fill the, the pens. And what the 5 to 1 ratio means is 1 drop of water to 5 drops of ink for any older ink bottles. Uh, fresh bottles you can you know generally use right off the bat. With every marker pen, you can take the end off of here or you can take the nib off. If you decide to take the nib off, then you're going to need a, sh a, a sharp knife or a hobby knife. For the most part, it's kind of a pain in the butt for me, so what I would do is use my teeth, <laughs> which is I don't recommend. Um, it's probably better for you to use a good set of needle nose pliers, or any sort of pliers would do. And you could yank it from there, but <laughs> here I go using it with my teeth, like so. So inside of the marker, once you've taken it out, is this filament. This is pretty much where the ink goes, and when you refill the pen, all the ink goes in that core. Inside of the nib is this little wick, like a, I guess it's like candle wick. And the wick draws the ink from the reservoir or the core filament uh, up into the nib. And that's how you get ink that flows from the nib. So when you're refilling the, the markers, you actually wouldn't take the core out to, to fill it. 
I mean, I guess you could, but it's really, really messy if you if you did it that way. Um, I'm just taking it out just so you can uh, see what it looks like on the inside. And we're dissecting the marker, basically, or the pen. Um, and it, once you're done, you put it back together. The back end goes in, and then the nib goes in, and the top goes on. And it is best to leave the pen upside down or with the, with the nib pointed to the ground so that the newly saturated core filament will drain down into the nib, uh, give the pen a good shake, and um, yeah, it's and you know it'll start to it'll start to write pretty bad, pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to take apart some of the other pens. Here we have the Stedler pigment liner. And it is pretty much the same as the Pigmas. You can take the pen apart at the nib to fill it there, which I'm going to do here. Or you can take it apart from the, the back end as well. Once you've filled the Stellar pen, you can go ahead and set that upside down to let the ink drain from the core down into the nib. This is one of my favorite pens, it's the Kuretake. Uh, for some odd reason though, the Kuretake has some weird ink in it and so I generally don't like to refill the Kuretakes with the aftermarket inks. With this Kuretake uh, pen, you can take it apart from the nib. Um, again, I'm going to go caveman and take it apart with my teeth. And uh, so there's the nib. So that's what the nib looks like with the, the extra little bit of filament uh, sticking out of it. And again, you grab the aftermarket ink and you put it right there into the core of the pen. Put the nib back onto the pen and close it up for posterity. So with the Pigmas, it's pretty much the same. The nib, you can take the pen apart from the nib or the back. We pop the ink in there, oversaturated because, um, because I went too fast, I made a big mess, and I'm an idiot. And then we put the nib back in, pop the top back on, put it upside down, let it wait. And here we have the Tombow. It's pretty much, pretty much the same, even though the nib mechanism is a little bit bigger than Pigma's. That's because um, the Tombow is more of a brush pen. With that in mind, I prefer to go in through the back end of um, the Tombow. <laughs> I just made it funny there. Um, and so we do the same. We fill it up, put it back together, set it down. And now we're moving on to the Prisma color, which is actually quite an odd pen. It's a, a thicker marker and I like to use it I like to use it to fill in large areas. As you can see, it's, um, it's a little bit dry. Um, we're going to go ahead and throw some aftermarket ink in there as well. Just gonna caveman it, just because it's something I do. I actually have a, a bunch of needle nose pliers, but I'm not using it here because I'm, I guess I'm lazy. <laughs> or maybe because I am kind of a caveman, I guess. Um, so we're gonna fill it up and booms, baby, it's done. So all in all, this is how you uh, refill these pens. It's actually a pretty easy process. I mean, most of the pens are pretty much exactly the same. You can open it through the nib or you can open it through the back and fill ink through you know, either side. Feel free to leave me a comment below if you have any questions or if uh, you, know, you find a ratio of water to ink that's better or you know, if you'd like to not even cut ink with any water or alcohol. Um, you know, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. What is your experience like? This is the ratios and what I found to work for me. Could be totally different for you, um, based upon your preferences. And the main reason why I'm, I'm even cutting the ink at all is just to avoid the pens crusting over. Um, and I find that that's a pretty good practice for my pens and makes them last a little bit longer. Because, you know, I don't ink every day, so, you know, I, I let the pens sit. Thanks for watching. Welcome back! I hope you enjoyed those tips and tricks. If my past experiences and my failures and and whatnot were able to help you in some way, that would be excellent. Please leave me a comment. Let me know if uh, any of these tricks have helped you out. And if any of the ratios of the inks versus the water and all of that works better for you, 
and what kind of brand of inks that you were using, please comment below and let me know. Please hit the little thumbs up button right there to like my video, if you like my video. If you dislike my video, please hit the thumbs up button right there to also to like my video because it will drive people nuts and you should definitely like it and share it. That would be fantastic. I appreciate you. Thank you for liking, for subscribing, for sharing it with your friends, getting the word out there. It means so much to me and I will see you in the next video. Peace.